So a few weeks ago, I had a really cool opportunity. A couple of days before Winter Nam 2020, I got to go to Boutique Amps Distribution. Now, if you don't know BAD, it is a company that houses a couple of really great, iconic amplifier brands, namely Morgan, Friedman, Soldano, and Tone King. Now, I was there as part of a pre nam event that BAD was putting on with some other content creators here on YouTube, and I had the opportunity to sit down with some of the best amp designers and builders in the game today. Joe Morgan, Dave Friedman, Mike Soldano, and Pete Ahrens from Tone King. Now, it's not every day you get the opportunity to pick these guys' brains. And I asked them a bunch of questions, but there was one thing in particular I was curious about, and that is, what do they think about modelers? What do these tube amp builders, these icons of the analog amp world, think of the shift towards modeling or the hybrid amps that are getting so popular now, like the Rev G20 or the Sir PT15? Now, you might think you already know what their answers would be, but I was pretty surprised. So this video, we're going to talk to four iconic amp builders about their thoughts on the digital amplification age. Before we jump into it, though, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I post new videos every week. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon down below to be notified when I'm posting new videos and going live here on the channel every Sunday night. And if you dig what I'm doing here and you'd like to support the channel, you can check out the links down below to get merch, check out my live shows that are coming up, and possibly sign up for The Green Room. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's jump in to the first interview with Joe Morgan. On a gig, and 15 minutes later, you called me on, on my cell phone and was like, hey, all right, let's figure this out because they're a tour the next week. So you overnighted me a new chassis, and it was like the greatest experience wow. I've had with any kind of customer service there. So I just wanted to share that. Dude, that's awesome. Caught me on a good day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> normally, <laughs> five days out of seven. I'm answer, but no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what the hell is this? How'd you get this number? <laughs> so all that to say, I'm a fan of your work. Thanks, man. I'm a fan of what you do. What, how do you see the, the sort of landscape today? That's a great question. With everything from full-on analog tube amps to the hybrid stuff where it's, you know, analog preamp, power amp, but with IRs and, and DI outs, and then all the way into the modeling stuff. Where do you see guitar playing as a whole headed? Is it going to be more towards the modelers? you think people are going to stay with the tube amps over the long term? Um, well, I think, you know, you can't, like, that Almond Brothers thing, you know, taking a crank Marshall on 10 and putting a Les Paul on it, and there's something... Um, there's something about that that makes you feel alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I've never felt that from a modeler, right? So that's, I think they have their place, you know, and I think I know at a lot of big stages where they're doing um, a lot of automated stuff and, you know, the guys aren't even switching their own amps or effects anymore. It's right. all being programmed in on MIDI for the song. You know, they just have to make sure they hit their spots on stage with yeah. the right dance moves. And which is sounds ridiculous, but it's more common than you would think. Yeah, we we live in that spot, right? Where there is a need for that, right? Yeah. There's a need for that, but we also I use this analogy a lot. Where modelers are really the internet porn of guitar amps because you can have any flavor you want, you just can't touch it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Dude, that's a great analogy. But when this is more like the wife or the girlfriend or, right. you know, something that is like, there's more of a relationship that happens with your guitar and music when you can, you know. Yeah, yeah. very well thought out. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes sense because it's like, yeah, you're right. To me, it's like this is, and, and look, I, I play everything I, I have gigs where it's like okay i'm just gonna take the helix yeah and throw it on the floor because it's totally like, get it it's a festival and it's a throw and go and i yeah. don't want to play this backline twin reverb and i have all my yeah weird right because the backline amp you think is, it should be good <laughs> dude <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> the worst things in the world man yeah it's uh but it, again it, it i always come back to the tube amp stuff long term because when I want to really feel what I'm playing and I want to interact with what I'm playing, it has to be. It's yeah. So. But if you need to get a job done. Yeah. You know? The, the modeling stuff and the digital stuff, 
is a tool yeah. for a job. And it's come a, it's come a really long way too. Yeah. I mean, from the early like red bean days. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the stuff like the, the helix, man. It's I mean, it sounds good. It's really impressive. Yeah, it's it really, really does. Joe. Well, here's what I'm finding. So, so people are using you know Axefexes, Kemper, Helix, uh, and there's guitar players growing up that have never played tube amps, mm. which is interesting. It's a, kind of a strange thing for me. They're great tools. They can be good, a good tool, and they can do a decent tone. But generally speaking, most people that I know that wind up plugging into the real thing versus that in the same room. There's an impact that the real thing has that the modeler will never seem to, well, at least not yet, doesn't yeah. quite have. But more so than just the, the, the impact or the feel, sometimes it's the feel yeah. of how it feels. It might sound, you might be able to record it, it might sound very similar, um, but there's a feel factor to yeah. it. Man, a modeler is complicated. Yeah. So I'm just like, you're on a thing and you oh, just got it, you know, it's not bright enough, I need it brighter. Where do, which page is it on? Yeah. Where's the presence? Right. You know, I, I mean, and and a Kemper is a digital snapshot of your amp, right? Mm -hmm. But if you, you can't move the EQ, it superimposes an EQ on top of it, and it doesn't sound anything like how the amp would react. So it's not like a true, uh, you know, one-to-one -one model of right. the amp. And, you know, I find, I, find, uh, I find some people that have been using modelers for a while have been switching back to tube X. I've noticed that, like, you know, even if it's small, and it doesn't mean you have to have a big setup. Yeah. You could have a 112 cabinet and a small amp or a small combo, and it's still small. Yeah. And the funny thing I always laugh at sometimes with the modelers and, and bands and stuff, they, they wind up building, like, a big rack full of these modelers and stuff, but it's a big rack. It's this big. <laughs> is it really it weighs small? Is that rack. really smaller yeah. than the head and a cab? Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're just using a little, you know, stomp or something, uh, you know. I, I'm a hybrid player. I, I go back and forth. There's a growing, I think, number of, of players like me who are doing everything from small hundred cap clubs to, you know, big theaters and maybe occasionally like stadiums opening for, you know, whatever act. And so mm -hmm. the appeal of like a modeler from my perspective is, okay, I've got a one-off fly date and going to... Kansas, I'm just gonna take this helix and throw it in the backpack and I don't have to worry about a backline twin or whatever. I totally understand that. But it's the feel. Yeah. That's the other thing I was gonna bring up. So if you're on a modeler in in ears with no cabinets, there is zero interaction between the guitar and what would have been an amp. Yeah. There's zero there's nothing. There's no feedback. There's no Unless you get it coming back through a monitor, no which then you have to, you have to, you have to rig up something in order for you to do that. Right. But there's no danger left. Yeah. So I mean, I understand the modeler for you know up maybe a pop gig and and it's something that's you know just cookie cutter pop or, or yeah. things like that. Doesn't really matter. Mm. It's not a guitar centric band. Yeah. But a guitar centric band. The interaction between the amp and the cabinet and the guitar and how it reacts and how it feeds back and how it or it doesn't feed back or how how you control it with your volume knobs and the volume level mm -hmm. is what makes music interesting yeah if you hadn't have heard you know whatever pick a song that has some feedback in it or something where a guitar is feeding back for a second or something the danger would be gone it would be it wouldn't be it wouldn't be interesting yeah so 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 you're kind of sterilizing music. I mean, you're coming up with these nice parts and all, but you're not getting any sort of interaction. Well, and that, you could get into a wider discussion with that too, the sterilization of music in terms of like lining up drum parts, everything's Absolutely. on the grid now, and, and yeah, you know, people are so used with that. to hearing auto-tuned vocals yeah. on everything. But you're right, and this is something that you put into words uh, something that I haven't been able to yet, which is the idea that when you're playing an electric guitar on stage with an amp, this becomes part of the instrument. It's Absolutely. not just amplifying the instrument. This is a this is part of the guitar. An sound. integral part of it. Yeah. And I'm not saying what became the prototype for the Soldano 100 watt Super Lead Overdrive. Yeah. And at that time, I just built it on a. I bent up a steel chassis, spray painted it white, put masking tape on it for labels, built a simple wooden box, and a buddy of mine 
fondly named it Mr. Science. So Mr. Science became this 100 watt head that I had. Do you still have that amp? I still have that amp. Yeah. Wow. Do you, do you see the tube amp fading in popularity? Do you see it staying where it is? Or do you think the pendulum will swing back the other way to where people are kind of rejecting the digital stuff and going all to Well, you know, the, the, the digital stuff certainly has its place. Like, I've got many friends of mine who are home recording guys that live in apartments and stuff where they want you know their, their whole the, the amount of space that they have that they can dedicate to their recording is very small plus they've got neighbors on all sides and they can't they can't crank up a 30 watt amp and throw a mic in front of it right. in the living room right. and go we're rocking out yeah. here you know yeah. so I, so I think I think the digital thing has become an incredibly great tool for those cats and the digital modeling has advanced so much from the earliest phase stages of it to now where they're doing some very accurate and very very complex and well-designed um, algorithms and stuff that actually now can really emulate the amp more than just kind of regurgitate an amp. Right. And so I think there's a lot of good stuff happening there, but I don't think that the tube amp will ever go away because there is still something very... I don't know if the word would be immediate, but when you're actually standing in front of a real amp and you're playing it, and there's this, there's this kind of almost call and response between you, the player, and the amp, this, and it's so immediate and so dynamic that I don't think the digital stuff's there yet for that. In other words, when you have a, when you have like a, a real two, a real high gain tube amp, for example, and you hit that note and it starts sustaining, and a lot of it is feedback induced. The modeling amp is trying to model what feedback looks like, right. whereas when you're doing this, it's actually a physical, it's air moving the strings yeah. on the guitar, and it's really happening right now in real time. Right. Even though maybe if you recorded both ways of doing it and listened to those recordings, that listening to them on playback, they wouldn't sound any different, yeah. possibly. Yeah. As a player standing there in the moment playing it, it's going to feel a lot different. Yeah. So I think that, you know, for that reason, players will always gravitate towards that, that, that physical feeling they get from playing a tube amp and will always want that. And there will always be that sort, that certain kind of almost imperfection that even comes from the most perfect tube amp yeah. that, that can vary for any number of reasons that we will always cherish as having kind of the mojo and the soul of something. Right. Right. So I think, I mean, yes, it's always, it's going to be increasingly hard to manufacture tube amps because the costs will always escalate. Yeah. Certain things probably will be getting harder to get. You know, tube manufacturing might get a little wonky yeah. at some point because of, you know, world politics or whatever. So there will be, there will always be challenges in doing, in doing tubes, but I think tubes are going to be here for a very long time just because there is this physicality to them that you just aren't going to get from even the best of the digital stuff. What I'm personally really excited about is like the the, the hybrid amp. So traditional analog tube, preamp, analog tube, power amp with a built-in reactive load. So you can basically run the amp silently and use impulse responses to record silently or go to front of house or whatever. But as an amp manufacturer and designer and builder, where do you see kind of the landscape nowadays, you know, in terms of this big shift in popularity towards the digital age versus the old analog stuff? So in that sense, I don't see myself as, a, as an amp designer. I see myself more than, as an electronic designer for electric guitar stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't make those differences. I'm just going to, I have a certain approach and um, no matter how I get there, the, I want to get there. That's the only thing. So what it means is I totally um, embrace the chance of having modelers in, in incorporated into a rig. Um, IR loaders is such a such a big thing. I'm, I'm, I think personally that's totally the future. Yeah. Um, so we have to make sure that we are designing amps electronics, whatever, if it's an actual amp or just a preamp, whatever you want to name it. It can be a pedal, just yeah. a basic pedal, which runs at nine volts. Um, we have to make sure that these sounds feel and sound the way uh, 
we're expecting it from a good amp because that's what it's about. We just want to have a good guitar tone. Yeah. And in the end, I don't I don't care if it's coming out of a tube amp or whatever kind of amp. I mean, yeah. I love tube amps. Don't get me wrong, but in the end, that's that's not the goal. The goal is to just have a, a decent sound. They're they're tools yeah. for a job. Right. And and the job is to inspire the player. There you go. And, I, and I, if I, you get inspired, you know, I, I have played digital stuff that inspires me. And I almost every time I play one of my tube amps, it inspires me because, you know, and, and I've mentioned this to the other guys here as well. It's like when you're playing a tube amp in a room going through a speaker cabinet, it becomes part of the instrument because it's interacting with the guitar. There has never been a better time to be a guitar player at well, the end of the day. Fully agree on that. It, I think we are in the golden age of <laughs> of guitar gear. I and so much agree on that. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Awesome. Pete, thank you so yeah. much, man. Thank you for, for being here. Awesome. It's been great. Yeah. So I found that pretty enlightening. It was awesome getting to talk to these guys and get their perspectives. And it's interesting to see that of the four different builders, there were four pretty different perspectives on the whole industry and where it's headed, but there were also some commonalities. Everyone talked about how it feels, not necessarily how it sounds. And that is something that I've encountered as a player. Like I said in the interview, I'm a hybrid player. I use both real tube amps and modelers, and I find a lot of value in both style of amplification. It's hard to beat the convenience and ease of use of something like a Helix or a Kemper or an Axe FX. Especially for someone who's traveling and touring and playing out a lot, they're really useful tools. That being said, there's something about a tube amp. There's something about firing up tubes and transformers and pushing a lot of air through a 212 or a 412 or even a 112 cabinet that gets me excited as a guitar player. And that's why I always go back to tube amps. So like I said in the interview with Pete, personally, I don't think there's ever been a better time to be a guitar player. We live in the golden age of gear and in some ways the golden age of guitar music, although that might be a controversial statement to some of you. So what do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments section down below. Are you a tube amp player? Are you a modeler? Are you a hybrid player? I wanna know. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Also, quick plug, I've got some tour dates coming up with Noah Guthrie and Good Trouble. If you're gonna be in Charlotte, North Carolina or Greenville, South Carolina, February 14th or 15th, we are coming to play in your town. You can find links to tickets down below as well as the rest of my tour schedule for the upcoming year if you're watching this video sometime in the future. Also, subscribe to my podcast. The Backstage Journal Podcast Season 2 just launched. You can find that link down below. It goes up every single week, Wednesday mornings at 6 a.m. I've got a lot of incredibly cool guests lined up for this season. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, Stitcher, on my website, or on my second channel, Rhett Shull 2, which is also linked down below. Anyways, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. My name is Rhett Shull, and remember, there is no plan B.